Jazakallah, Brother Mama Sheikh, for your inspirational lecture. I will now open the floor for the question and answer session. I will request all ladies and gentlemen who want to ask questions or clarify any issues. If they can come up, on the right hand side up here there is a mic. You can make a line up here and ask your question one after the other. When you come up to the mic, please introduce yourself and then ask your question. I will request if the ladies can be given the first chance. Thank you. What is that? Um, the question is, what relationship we should have with the non-believers? Okay, thank you. Uh, the question is, if uh, not heard properly, what relationship we should have with the non-believers, right, who do not believe in generally. So uh, for that, I'm giving you references. You can write down and see that Ali Imran 3, 118, 119, and 120. It says, Ya ayyu al-ladheena amanu la tattakhidu min dunikum la ya'lunakum khabala waddu ma anittum qad batadil baghdao min affaihim وَمَا تُغْفِي صُدُورُهُمْ أَكْبَوْ قَدْ بَيَّنَّا لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Oh, you believe you do not take within inside the unbelievers from beside yourselves. They will not fail to make you crazy. And they like that you suffer. Without doubt, hatred has appeared from their mouths. And what is hidden in their chest is greater. Without doubt, we have clarified for you ayah sign if you have intelligence. Here you are. Those of you who love them, they do not love you. You believe in the book, all of it. And when they meet you, they say we believe. When they are alone, they bite their fingers from the anger over you. Say, die with your anger. Surely Allah is knowledgeable with those who have chest. Now these verses are for the believers and the unbelievers. muhid. <laughs> And if goodness touches you, they get, if goodness touches you, they get hurt, feel bad. And if hurtness is, badness is touches you, they rejoice. And if, if you have patience and you take God, their machinations, machinations cannot harm you in anything. Surely Allah encompasses what you are doing. Now in these verses that I've read, this is a relationship with a believer and a non-believer. We should have distance. Do not come bring them inside because you love the book. I'm talking about those who believe and practice. There are people in the Muslim world who don't know the book. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking who start believing, taking guidance from the book. So they must take this in notice. And those people who are against the book, people who do not know the book, you can't take them as enemies. You will identify them when you identify them who are your enemies. And when you identify them, you should be very, very careful. Yes, please. Well, My name is Dilla and my question is, how do you know that the messengers pray for our mistakes and we will be forgiven? Okay. Uh, the question is, how do we know that the messenger prays for our mistakes and will be forgiven? Uh, the messenger will pray and will be forgiven. You see, we people, mankind, there are acts, we do good and bad, I told you, and we make it a mixture. After start believing, still we do wrong. So there are verses explains how the messenger prays. Surah Tawbah 9, 102, and the verses are 102 and 104. The ayah says, wa akhruna atarafu rahim. And others have confessed with their sins. They have missed correct acts and other bad acts. 
it may be that Allah will return over them. Surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. Meaning people who have mixed good acts with bad acts. Hundred percently we are not all good, we are not all bad. We are mixing the two. So people who confessed, meaning they have admitted, yes, we are wrong and we will amend and correct. So if we mixed, uh, others have confessed with their sins, they have mixed correct acts with bad acts. So now what to do, what the person who has done, who is mixing bad and good together and how Allah uh, explains us in further ayat 103. Khud min amwalim sadaqa tutahirum wa tuzakkihim biha wa salli alayhim inna salataka sakanun lahum. Wallahu samin alayhim. Take sadaqa, sadaqa charity from their wealth so they, that you purify and justify them and pray over them. Surely your prayer is a satisfaction from, for them. And Allah is hear, all hearing and all knowing. Now in, in the world prayer, it says if you, if you want your sin to be forgiven and you want that the mistakes Allah has forgiven us, you have to give sadaqa. Now in the sadaqa does not mean you slaughter a goat. In general terms, we think that you have to slaughter a black goat or a black, you know, something. Sadaqa means you give charity to the needy or what, the, there's a separate lecture what the Quran says about the charity and sadaqa or zakah. That's a different topic, but you have to do it for Allah and His Messenger. So if you identify your, first of all, we have to identify our mistake and we have to identify the ayah that prohibit us of that, with, with, which uh, uh, make me confess the mistake. For example, there is an ayat in the Quran, Wala taqrubu zina inna ukana faisha wa sa sabila. That you do not gear, go near to zina, adultery or fornication, do not go near. So this ayah I identified. Now, if somebody is involved, he must know the ayah says, Wala taqrubu zina inna ukana faisha. That do not go near to zina or adultery or fornication. We have identified. The verse is saying it, and if I am involved, I must stop. Now this verse, you must, this verse as a base of your correction. Then you have to give sadaqah to charity. And then you pray the same verse in the salah, the prayer. And bow down and prostrate on this verse. zina inna faisha sabila. This verse. So now when you are prostrating on this verse, the order is that you do not go near to zina or fornication because Allah says in this ayat, so I am stopping it if I'm not involved and, and I'm stopping it and I'm praying it and I'm giving sadaqah and I'm prostrating and bowing on this verse. So this is how you control yourself. This is how you govern yourself. So you give sadaqah then you recite that particular ayah which is related to your the mistake. I'm just giving you an example. Every verse where you are wrong, you have must know the verse. Not that I do not do this and I do not do this according to my vain desire, I think I am doing right. You must identify a verse which tells you, informs you to do or not to do the do's and the don'ts of the book. Then you do sadaqa and, and then refrain yourself or act upon it where it says do. And in the prayer you repeat that verse. This is how you take guidance. And, and then it says, Alam ya'lamu anna Allah huwa yaqbalu tawbata an ibadi wa ya'khudu sadaqat wa anna Allah huwa tawabu rahim. Do they not know that Allah is He who accepts the repentance from the servants and He takes the charities and that Allah is He who is returning merciful. So if you do give sadaqa or charity, it's based on the specific verse which is, uh, which is controlling your psyche. A specific verse you are re repeating in your prayer and this is how the messenger prays over you and then you will not repeat and this is how you are forgiven yes please Wa alaikum salam my name is Nurdan and um, Muhammad Sheikh I've come to your lectures in Pakistan and I've seen it on the internet my question to you is yep. how can we defend ourselves from the people so that we don't get hurt and become bad or take revenge due to their actions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The very good question is related to that. How can we defend ourselves from the people so that we do not get hurt, become bad or take revenge due to their action? You see, normally in the world is tit for tat. 
Meaning you do wrong, I do wrong. This is not Islam. This is not Quran. This is not the teaching of the book. Question is, how can we defend ourselves from the people so that we do not get hurt, become bad or take revenge due to their action? Generally people think from the very childhood, if the two boys or girls or little children are playing and they fight, then he says, he did this and I did this. See, because he did this, I did this. He's got a reason for doing wrong. First, a person does wrong. The other person who reacts to that wrong and says, because he did this, I did this. So now it becomes, when you grow up, you still become a tit for tat person. You abuse me, I abuse you. You hit me, I box you. This is not Islam. I and for I is not the book of God. You must listen to me very carefully. So in Fusilat 41, Ayah says 34, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّعَةِ اِتْفَ بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ And the goodness and the hurtness or badness are not even or not equal. Repel, repel hurtness, badness with what is good. Then between you and between the one whom you have enmity, surely he will be like the one who is a close protector. If somebody does bad to you, you do good. This is what the teaching of Quran is. If you do bad, you become like him. So Allah says, repel evil with goodness. Then between you and between the one who have, you have enmity, surely he will be the one who will be a close protector to you. So if somebody does wrong to you, you must do in return good to him. If you do good, surely he'll become one of you. But if you become bad in the same manner, then what is the difference between you and the bad person? You understand what I'm saying? You must understand Allah does not teach us revenge or taking action because your heart will be pure. Because otherwise you, you, if you do wrong, then suppose somebody murders my brother. Example. So if I go and brother, murder his brother, the brother didn't do anything, I murder his brother. I murder him, I am committing a blunder, I am committing myself a murder. So murder against murder is not right. So if somebody does wrong, you must do good. You pardon, forgive. Because otherwise your hurt, heart will be hardened and you take vengeful and you will be in a, in, a, in a problem. So in more detail, another Ashura 42 to 43. You write down these references. And the reward of hurtness, badness is the like is like the hurtness, badness of it. But remember, the one who does bad will will, will return bad will go bad to him. Like to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you do bad, you will return get bad from somewhere else, not from the same guy. If you are a good person, somebody does wrong to you and you do not return back bad, so but he will be affected. Allah says, if you do bad, you will be bad, you will get badness again. But if somebody does to be bad, if I don't do bad again, I will not get bad. You understand what I'm saying? If, if you do bad, you will get some ba badness from somewhere else. But the, the reward of the hurtness, badness is the like of hurtness, badness of it. If you do bad, you will get badness from somebody. But for us, for believers, he says, then whosoever pardons and corrects his rewards is over on Allah, surely he does not love the oppressors. So the one who has done bad to, bad to you, you pardon him. You forgive him. You pardon and correct, so his reward is on Allah. And definitely whosoever help themselves when they are being hurt, he has been, or after he's been oppressed, then they are those on whom there is nothing wrong from the way. So if somebody has hurted you, so, and definitely whosoever help themselves after he has been oppressed or hurt, then they are those on whom there is nothing wrong on the way. Surely the wrong way is over those who oppresses mankind and without doubt the truth they do wrong in the earth. They are those for whom is a painful punishment. So there are people who are doing wrong, the painful punishment is on them. If they do bad, they will get back, ba ba they will get ba badness to them. But what is the behavior, our behavior, believer behavior is, if somebody do bad, you do good. That is the teachings of the ayahs of the Quran. 
you don't have to be bad. If someone abuses you, you say, I forgive you. If somebody slaps, you know that in the Bible, the Jesus, if somebody slaps, you give it a cheek. You have to forgive. You don't get, get slapped, but at least you forgive that person. Forgive him. And you see the, how after, he do bad, you keep on doing good to him. And that is, your heart will be pure. You won't get hurt. This is the teachings. Well, son. I have a question for you. Yep. How can we identify the enemies of Allah? And okay. how should we have with them? Okay. okay. You see, how can we identify the enemies of Allah? And when they are identified, what should be our behavior to them? This is the question. You see, the it, it, ayat refers to believers. It's Mumtainna 601 verse. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tattakhidhu aduwi wa aduwakum awliya tulquna ilayhim bil mawadda wa qad kafar wa qad kafaru bima jaakum min al haqq yukhrijuna ar rasula wa iyyakum an tu'minu billah rabbikum in kuntum kharajtum jihadan fi sabili wa ibtigha amardati tusirruna ilayhim bil mawadda wa ana a'lamu bima akhfaytum wa ma a'lantum O oh, you believe you do not take my enemy and your enemy as protector. And, and you encounter with love towards them and without doubt they rejected with what came to them from the truth. They expel the messenger and you that you believe with Allah your Lord. If you came out striving in my way and desiring my good pleasure, you you seek with love secretly towards them and I know more with what you conceal and what you declare. And from you, whosoever does it, so without doubt, he has stayed the even way. So Allah says to the believers that you do not take my enemy and your enemy as protector. You encounter with love towards them when they, have, they, have, when they have, without doubt have rejected with what came to them from the truth. Whatever the truth came to them, they have rejected they expel the Rasul, the messenger, out and you believe with Allah and your Lord. If you came out striving in my way and desiring my good pleasure, do not seek, seek secretly love towards them. I know what, more with what you conceal and what you declare. So you must know that people who are enemy to Allah and enemy to the messenger, you must not have good relation with them. And how we should know, but... Further in the in same surah, Mumtainna 67 and 8, 9. Asallahu an ladina adaytum minhum mawadda. Wallahu qadir, wallahu ghafur rahim. La yanhaakum allahu anil ladina lam yuqatilukum fid din. Walam yukhrijukum min diyadikum an tabarruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhi minna allaha yuhubbul muqsitin. Innama yanhaakum allahu anil ladina qatilukum fid din. وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَظَاهَرُوا عَلَىٰ إِخْرَاجِكُمْ أَنْ تَوَلَّوْهُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّوْهُمْ فَأُولَائِكُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Maybe Allah will pour love for them between you and between those whom you have, you have enmity. And Allah is the most powerful. Allah is forgiving, merciful. Allah does not, uh, does not forbid you about those who do not fight you in the judgment of Allah. And they do not expel you from your circles. That is, you may be righteous to them and you do justice towards them. Surely Allah loves those who do justice. People who are not believers, but they do not fight you for the religion, you can have good relationship. He says, Allah does not forbid you about those who do not fight you in the judgment of Allah. They do not expel you from your circles and that is that you may be righteous to them. Then you may be righteous to them. And you do, not ju and you do justice towards them. Surely Allah loves those who do justice. Surely Allah forbids about those who fought you in the judgment and expel you from your circles and they supported over your expulsion so that you turn towards them and whosoever turns to them, they are those who are the oppressors. So if people be unbelievers who fight you for the judgment, in the judgment and expel you from your circles so that you uh, and support the, in the expulsion, then you 
then then the, the then you turn that you turn the whosoever then then you have the right to defend yourself defend not fighting but i told you how to ifabillati asan do good uh, to get good uh, uh, for the bad reaction you do good that is the way you have to fight yes please hello my name is chamati i'm my question is We have noticed in the world that there are non-Muslim communities like Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, and Jews, etc. Who do good deeds and works? What does the Quran say about them? Okay. Now the question is: We have noticed. He said we have noticed in the world there are non-Muslims communities like Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, and Jews, etc., who do good deeds and works. And what the Quran has to say for their good deeds? So in that, I will read two, three ayahs, Surah Nur, twenty-four, thirty-nine. والذين كفروا أعمالهم كسراب بقيعة يحسب الظمآن ما حتى إذا جاءوا لم يجدوا شيئا ووجد الله عنده فوفاه حسابه والله سريع الحساب. And those who rejected their deeds works are like mirage with a plain land. The thirsty calculated it as water until when he came to it, he did not find it anything. He found Allah near near it. And he completed his account for him. Allah is quick, uh, quick in taking the account. This verse is relating to those people. Not the brother explained all these communities. If these communicate communities do not read the book, they can read it for out of curiosity. But people who do not who read the book and who reject the book, so Allah said their works are like a mirage. They think they are doing good deeds. With a plain land, the thirsty calculates it as a water. Until when he came to it, he did not find it anything except Allah. He found Allah. So basically, good deeds in the Quran is Ya Yuladina Amanu, those who believe, Wa Amilu Salihat, who do correct actions, who correct themselves. So belief and corrections goes together. Not only good deeds. If you are doing good deeds, only. And without believing Allah and His Messenger, just doing by yourself, then that is like a mirage. And Surah Nas 16 it says, "Ma in the kum yan fadu, wa ma in the Allahi baq, wa la nazyan al ladina sabaru ajrum bi asani ma kanu yamalun." What is near you is consumed, ended, and what is near Allah is lasting, remaining. And we will definitely reward them their wage with goodness, who have patience, what they were doing. What is near with you, whatever you are doing for the world will be vanished, ended, finished. Whatever you are doing, I am talking in general. Everything, whatever you are trying to find out, doing this and doing that, will be finished, ended. But what is near Allah for Allah, you doing is lasting, remaining, and we will definitely reward them their wage with goodness who have patience what they were doing. Yes, please. <coughs> Why, well, sir? Uh, my name is Ubaid, and thank you very much for an informational talk. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask you. Uh, we are leading material life these days. We have the love for material in this materialistic world, um, and we may have relatives who are non-Muslims or non-practicing Muslims. How can we strike a balance uh, in our relationships with, uh, as as believers, with that? Thank you very much. Uh, the question is in this. He says in this materialistic world, we have love for material things and love for our parents, and children, and and relatives who are either non-Muslims or non-practicing Muslims or How to have a balanced relation with them as believers? So in the Quran, Surah Taubah, it says, "Ya yuladin amalu la tatkhulu aba akum wa ikhwan akum awliya in istahabu in istahabu al kufra ala al iman. Wa man yatawallahu minkum faulaikum al zalimun." Oh, you believe? You do not take your fathers or ancestors and your brothers as protectors if they seek to love rejection. Over belief, <coughs> and whosoever from you take them as as protectors, then they are oppressors. So it is referring that people who are believers, meaning belief on the ayahs and the verses, they should even their fathers and brothers and sister, whoever the relations are, you not go beyond uh, be, uh, loving them beyond the orders of Allah. You can love them. You have to love your parents. You have to love your brothers and sisters. You have to have love of them. But since you have become a believer. You must refrain yourself in the love, not transgressing the orders of Allah. Whatever the orders are, 
if they uh, if they reject the ayas and they reject this you must love them you make have love with them whatever relation but you should not transgress that's important further it says surah tauba 924 qul in kana abakum wa abnakum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwalun nitaraftumuha wa tijaratun takshawna kasadaha wa masakinu tardawnaha ahabba ilaykum min allah wa rasuli wa jihad fi sabili fatarabbasu hatta yati allah bi amri wallahu la yahdi al qaum al fasiqin say if your fathers and sisters and your sons and your brothers and your pairs or wives or husbands and your associates and the wealth to which you are committed and the businesses in which you feel a slum and the residences in which you are pleased you have more love towards them than allah and his messenger and to struggle in his way then you wait until allah comes with his order and allah does not guide the people who are liberals in these verses there are many things that are mentioned fathers brothers sons children pairs and their associates and the wealth that to which you are committed in your businesses in which you feel a slum and the residence in which you are pleased or delighted if you have more love to all these than allah and his messenger you can love everything that is mentioned believe me all you can love but you must refrain your love that you do not transgress the orders of allah you can love them allah is not but you cannot love more what allah has said in the quran or what allah has said in the ayats so you can love them but you can refrain because it says if you have more love for them then you will suffer so you in the relationship brother ars last one more was and sura mujadala 58 and ayah 22 la tajidu qauman yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir yuwaduna man hadda allah wa rasula walau kanu abahum aw abnakum abnahum aw ikhwanahum wa ashiratuhum ulaika kataba fi qulubihim al iman wa ayyadahum bi ruh min wa yudkhiluhum jannatin tajri min tahtil anhar khalidina fiha رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن اولئك حزب الله الا ان حزب الله هم المفلحون you will not find the people who believe it allah and the last day that they love those who transgress allah and his messenger even if their fathers ancestors or their sons or their brothers or their relatives they are those on whom allah wrote the belief in their hearts and strengthened them with the ruh the spirit from him and he will enter them in gardens in the rivers from beneath them where they will live in in it forever allah is pleased about them and they are pleased about him they are the party of allah is it not the party of allah are those who are successful in this ayah you will note allah says that you will not find people who believe in allah and the last day they love those who transgress allah and his messenger people who have transgressed allah and his messenger though they may be their fathers their ancestors or their sons or their brothers or their relatives they are those on whom allah wrote the belief in their hearts and strengthened them with the spirit the essence of the message of the ayas strengthened them with the spirit the essence of the message of the ayas he will enter them in the gardens the rivers flow from beneath so if the fathers or the ancestors are not believers you must love them but you must have limitations in your love you must have boundaries for their love you must not transgress the orders of allah again in love and in and in surah taghabun 64 14 and 15 ya ayyul ladina amanu inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwwan lakum fa'dharuhum wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru fa inna allah ghafur rahim inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna والله عنده اجر عظيم او يو بليف شولي امونغست يور وايفز اور يور चिल्ड्रन ار انيميز تو يو سو بي كاشس اوف ذيم اند اف يو پاردن شيك هاندز اند فورگيف ذيم شولي الله از فورگيفين مرسيفول اگين يو سي ذا بيليورز ار ادريسد او يو بليف شولي امونغست يور وايفز اور پيرز يور चिल्ड्रन يور ار انيميز تو يو سو ذا चिल्ड्रन اند سم تايم ذي بيكم انيمي تو يو sometimes the wise become enemy to you so what allah say you become their enemy no he says you be cautious of them you pardon them you shake hand with them 
for, and forgive them. Surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. So remember, even if your wife or, or, or children are, are enemy to you, the, you can't become their enemy. If you become enemy, you become on the wrong path. You must pardon, you must forgive. Surely your wealth and your children are a captivation. And here Allah is a great reward. So at times, even your children are a captivation or the wealth, you, you are captivated. You are so much captivated and with your children and your wealth that you forgot Allah, forget the message of Allah, forget the nearness of Allah. And Allah say it will be vanished, it will be ended. What is remain is what is what you do for Allah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah.